they're so way ahead that like they run out of things to put in cars so people think they're outdated the car that made mercedes redesign a whole car What's up guys and welcome back today we're gonna be reviewing my ls 400 my lexus the car that made mercedes redesign a whole car whole <laughs> whole generation of s-class so uh yeah let's get into it Lexus, being a company of Toyota, was officially an American brand. Like I said in my previous episode with my LS, uh, sorry, my LX470 episode review, I mentioned that, you know, Lexus being an American brand, Toyota being its, you know, mother company. This is the first Lexus to ever come out, and it made a lot of noise when it came out. Back in the 80s, Toyota was one of the leading manufacturers amongst all the other brands they were money hungry you know they, they were like you know what we're making money we want to make some more money and we want to make a lot of money you know i like money bro do you like money yeah, so even toyota was like yo you like <laughs> money you know we want to make more money so they're like let's make another brand what other way to make more money is start our own uh you know luxury uh car brand when you already have a big factory and you know you're already manufacturing cars you know let's just throw a premium brand on it maybe give it some more premium parts basically make more money and this ls400 being the first lexus to come out what they did was they sent their research team all the way out to california uh various areas of california down in the la area malibu the posh places you know like long beach all these places they had their you know research team living there to see what you know, people who could afford these luxury cars drove, what kind of features they liked. You know, the research team got back to Japan. They were like, yo, these guys are big lazy <laughs> They love big cars, big V8s, big spongy soft seats. That's when they came up with this car, the LS400. You know, Lexus comes out, make a lot of noise. Uh, they keep it on the low, low. You know, they're like, we don't want people to know that we're coming out with the luxury brand. So once they got their, you know, research from their team, they went ahead and developed a car and then they drove it on the autobahn and it was like badged as a toyota so no one really like cared and that's the thing like they even went far enough to go to uh manufacturers and make their employees like they went to chevy factories and ford factories and they even got manufacturer other manufacturers staff to sit in this car blindfolded and then sit in like a mercedes or like some other german counter brand and, and everyone thought this was a German car. You know, they didn't. They would never think that this was a Japanese car. So, including their own staff. So uh, it was crazy. I used to own a W140. The Mercedes W140 was a competitor, direct competitor to this car. Believe it or not. Remember my 140? Remember how comfy it was it was? Now, can I ask you a question? What's more comfier? Now Probably that you think this. about it. Probably this, right? Yeah, so I remember my 140 being wider than this. But the comfort wise, I feel like, whoa. As you can see, it just eats up the bumps, you know? Comfort wise, I feel like this is definitely, I don't want to say better than a 140, probably subpar to it, like, you know, right, right next to it when it comes to it. So this car was direct competitor to the W140 Mercedes S-Class. Mr. Bruno Sacco designed the, the W140. Everyone thought it was like the state of the art like car at the time, you know? For example, I used to always think, you know, a few of my buddies when I bought it, they're like, oh, you got the best Mercedes. It's the most expensive Mercedes ever made. You know, Mercedes spent $1 billion on the R&D for this car. And I used to be like, wow, you know, they spent so much money on this car. I guess it shows, you know, the technology, the way it drives and everything. And then I drove this. And I was like, wow, this drive is really similar, if not better. Mercedes spent a lot of money. There was a reason why Mercedes spent a lot of money. Mercedes was already $500 million 
into the project and then Lexus went ahead and launched this car or you know gave out hints that they're launching a luxury brand so Mercedes had to go back and redo their whole research and development on you know the 140 just so it could be anywhere as close to this so that's why it was you know about one billion dollars you know the LS 400 being the flagship car of Lexus and Toyota at the time and obviously launching the brand really nicely you know it, it had a really good response so a lot of people you know wanted to get their hands on the Lexus when it came out so they sold they, they did pretty good at numbers because it was probably like I want to say twenty thirty thousand dollars cheaper compared to like your S-Class or your 7 Series you know Audi I didn't think they had an A back then this car was legit launched for Americans you know like it's got the big V8 big comfy seats all the, all the luxury features you need real easy to use features as well and real reliable just like an uh, American car I guess you could say so and really easy to work on as well so Lexus went ahead and fit this with the uh, you know one UZ V8 it's a four liter uh, makes about 250 horsepower 350 NMF torque so it's pretty good engine you know made more torque than horsepower it had that low end pull you know you didn't really have to step on the gas to move this thing because this is a pretty heavy car and the gear changes are so seamless like you don't even notice it it's so smooth it's nothing crazy it's just a normal four speed with overdrive you know it's not like a dual clutch or a zf or something normal torque converter you know transmission but it shifts so smooth you know just like the 140 you know this is just so smooth and i can definitely say this is the direct competition to the 140 nothing less just because it's a japanese brand if anything i feel like this is a little more luxurious than the W140, especially because leather seats were standard in this, you know? A lot of features were standard in this compared to like the Mercedes or any other German cars. You know, the V8 was standard. Of course, in America, the S-Class only came in a V8. So uh, yeah, this was standard of V8. You know, a lot of features, like I said, leather seats, you got your sunroof. This is actually like pretty much a base model. Got the heated seats in the back, heated seats in the front. It even has a button to adjust your steering wheel, you know, right here. It even has a button to lower your seatbelt adjustment, you know, up and down. So they didn't leave any room for error, nothing for Americans to complain. Americans are big, lazy, me being one of them, you know. <laughs> they even got belt adjusters, so you don't have to, like, turn around and, you know, pull it down and stuff. You know, you got your button right here. So, um, and obviously your memory seats, you know, it had all your luxury features that you want, would want to need back then. Clean Toyota Qualys, but it's a government car, but still, what a clean example of the Toyota Qualys. I just appreciate it. I feel like these cars are really going to be collector's items one day because... Qualys. Yeah, bro, I mean, like, you got to realize this is, like, a part of history in India. It was the first SUV to officially be launched in in India by Toyota. It was made in India. I think they sold a million of them. I know. I don't know. They sold a lot of them. Probably, I know they sold a lot of them. That's all. Okay. It's supposed to be an eight seater, seven seater, but you know how we are. We, we, I've seen like 16 people get out of one <laughs> once. So I, I think they're really going to be one one day, one day, not not anytime soon. I'm probably talking about like 2040. Qualices are going to be the next hot thing. You know, they're going to be like the Land Cruiser 80 series, what they are now. And by the way, we're cruising on the ceiling. It's so, it's so cool, like, whoa, hey, cruising on the lake, like I said, you know, it's <laughs> another day in Mumbai, cruising in my old Lexus, and then a 911 Turbo just blows past you like you're standing still, and right, that's the same 911 from the other Sunday, if you guys remember, from our Sunday drive, when we took the LX out, every time we're in a car, like in a non-sports car, people are in a sports car and, you know we always see these other people we never happen to see people when we're in my nissan or something we also need to do like a re-review of my nissan don't you think so that car deserves like another review so now i know you guys must be wondering you said a million dollar lexus an american brand how in the hell do you have a right hand drive lexus the reason why it's right hand drive because obviously these cars being an american brand they were still imported to other countries like for example you know australia 
uh, UK, obviously Dubai, and other countries, just to give you an example. So yeah, that's why I have a right-hand drive Lexus, and if this is a proper Lexus, it's not a Toyota Celosaur. You know, the Toyota counterpart of this car is called the Toyota Celosaur. If anything, it had more features than the Lexus standard. So the person who I actually bought this car from has a Toyota Celosaur, and uh, he has air suspension in his. This one does not have the air suspension or the right height control. It's just on regular coil wheels, but it still rides so good. I can just imagine how it is with the. Uh, the, with the factory air suspension or the hydraulics, whatever it is. So, uh, Ruel's here having his cappuccino. That doesn't fit. That's what she said. The finger doesn't fit. I'm gonna drop it. To fit inside. Hold it like this. Hold it like that. Oh, why don't you put it on the saucer? No, 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 no. no. That's what Chai That's not for No, just do it. Cappuccino. We're changing the game up. No, no, no. So, we're here now at Kalagoda Cafe. Finally, after like Finally, after one year. Almost a year. Oh, here's the food too. What perfect timing. Yes. Another thing I want to mention, just like the S-Class, this car is super quiet on the inside. It doesn't have the double glazed glass like the S-Classes do, but the insulation is super good. It's really hard to hear what's going on outside. Also, you don't hear, really hear that V8 engine. It's not really loud like you know you would think it is like you know but this with an exhaust sounds amazing you know well let's, let's roll another let's roll a little clip of what the ls400 sounds like with an exhaust so we got our center display over here you know you got your lexus premium sound system you got your time over the years you know it's worn out a little bit climate control but it's not dual zone it's only single and you know like i said this car was designed for americans so everything's real easy to read you know the buttons are nice and big you got your clock over here with your clock settings you know real easy to use and of course your sound system now check this out you know it's got your tape even has cd but the cd changer is in the back in the trunk which my car is missing but anyways, I have this radio transmitter over here so I can play my Bluetooth audio. But check this out. With the sound system, you got your equalizer here too. You got your bass, mid, treble, balance, left to right. You got your fader, front to back, and obviously for your radio tune and seek. Power button to turn it on and off. And it's also your volume button as well. I actually love listening to songs from this era because the speakers, you know, like... Obviously, the songs from this era and these speakers sound the best. So I love listening to, you know, like your little Mob Deep or some Biggie, Tupac, you know. That's your center console for you. As you can see here, here's the ashtray. Oh, wow. You can push this button and it comes right out. It gracefully comes out. And you can empty your dirty business and then put it back. Got the chrome trim around it, you know, because it's plush and luxury. All about luxe when it comes to Lexus. And obviously, your cigarette lighter where it's right here so you can put in a charger or whatever if you actually want to use it as a lighter right below it you have a button uh right above the ashtray it's for the headlight washers believe it or not this car came with headlight washers back then i know a lot of german cars did but many japanese cars didn't so it's really a surprise to see this with the headlight washer right next to that is the heated seat the front two heated seats you know you got left and right well, there's no options for you know the settings in the heater it's just one button and one setting that's it because usually you have like for example on my lexus i have a high low setting for the heated seats this only has one setting you just press it it's on and off that's it coming down here you got your gear knob you know overdrive button it is a four speed with the overdrive you also have a button over here so back in the day we didn't have anything called you know they didn't have like a sport or a sport plus button or a comfort button you have something called you know it's a norm it says norm you know it says normal and then ect power so when you hit that as you can see over here on the screen you hit that button ect power when you're driving it is kind of sluggish but then when you put in the ect power the throttle response gets way better than driving in normal obviously honestly it's fine i, I don't really need to use it that often the throttle response pretty good for the mumbai traffic all right Coming over here in the center, you know, we got your... I, I, I do got to show you guys, this is a holographic display. For example, there are lights over here and it gets shot onto... It's like a projection, basically. Like, for example, if I turn on the headlights, as you can see over here, it's basically... Well, not that, but damn, where, where the hell is the... 
Anyways, this screen over here, basically, some of the lights that come on, for example, let me turn the car off, so we get, you know, all the lights over here. So basically, as you can see, these are all projections as I move the camera. It's like a project projection on the screen, as you can see, you know, if I go ahead and cover, you can see there's lights over here projecting that check engine light right there, and obviously the lights over there as well. Pretty cool, ahead of its time like how Lexus is always. Right here below with the steering wheel, right next to the steering column, you'll see a button that says on, off, remote. It says on and off, and then it says remote in the middle. Now this car came with the keyless entry, but if you weren't using the keyless entry, you have to put it off. So this way the car would uh, unlock without the alarm going off and the immobilizer working, the security system working. Uh, so you have it on off if you're just using the regular valet key. But if you are using the key with the, the central locking, you can leave it on on. So, so pretty cool how, you know, Lexus left that feature in and they knew that, you know, a lot of people value this car. It's so crazy how Lexus put that in there. As you can see over here, you know, right below the speedometer, there's a button that says, there's a description here, it says security, and then there's a, I guess, a light, LED light right next to it. And that blinks when the car is locked. Uh, that's only if it's on, on. So yeah, right now I have it in off because the original owner lost the, I guess, the key with the remote in it. So, so I'm driving around and off. Over here on the right side, you got your mirror controls, you got your headlight leveling or your adjustment switch. And you also got your rear fog lights. So right below that, as you can see, there's a coin holder and I got some coins in there just to give an example. It's pretty cool, you know, it's on the driver's side. So it's easy accessible. You can pay your tolls, your parking whatever uh, auto window just for the driver's side as you can see over here on the door panel you know your power windows obviously your window lock switch your door lock and it's only auto for the driver's side it goes down all the way when you hit it for auto but then when you pull up you have to manually hold it because it doesn't go up in auto that's weird something they should have done for all windows like my lx but then i guess that technology came in later on as Lexus pr progressed throughout the years. You got a lock, so you can lock the trunk, I guess, from the valet. You also got your fuel switch as well. Now, the trunk is only accessible from this button. There's no buttons outside on the trunk that you can open up the trunk from. Yeah, I think it's electric. I'm not sure. It seems electric, because when you press it, it makes like a, you know, a sound like of an electric motor unlocking a lock to open up the trunk, so. So check this guys, check this out guys. As soon as you put the key in, the steering obviously is electronic, adjustable, tilt and telescopic. As soon as you put the keys in, it comes back to the setting of where you like it. So when you turn the car off, it goes back up for your easy entry exit. Like I said, the only switch inside is in the car. There's no buttons here physically to open the trunk. I have no idea why Lexus did that, but it's kind of inconvenient because you have to open it up from the inside. And God forbid, you know, the the, bu the button stop working. There's no, there might be an emergency, you know, button or a switch or a handle to open it. But there's nothing on the inside, I'll tell you that. Oh, there is. Wow, let's just even thought of that. Over here, you got your toolbox, check it out. Your yeah, screwdriver, your torque wrench. I don't know what this is. I think this is your jack. Look, it says Toyota Motor Japan. 2H, I don't know what 2H stands for, two hours? That's how long it takes to change the power. Oh no, what the hell is this? I have no idea what this is. If anyone knows what this is, please comment below and let us know. It's some kind of part. Now over here, this is where the CD changer would actually go, but I'm missing it, I don't know why. And over here we have the spare tire and your jack as well. So it's got a full-size spare, how cool is that? Pretty big trunk, you can fit one and a half wells in there, pretty good. There it is guys, the 1UZ FE 4 liter V8, 32 valve, quad cam. Guys, it does have power seats, as you can see, this and that. Both the sides power seats, you got your lumbar support, obviously you got your backrest, your, you know, your bottom portion over here as well, you got your backrest and your lumbar support as well. So, both the sides, power seats, way ahead of its time, Lexus.
so yeah i mean i hope you guys enjoyed that vlog of the ls400 as much needed review a lot of quirks and features here and there uh, way ahead of its time like that's the thing with lexus they're way ahead of their time they're so way ahead that like they run out of things to put in cars so people think they're outdated like for example the newer lexuses <laughs> Yeah, it's true. The newer Lexuses has that big 12-inch screen, 13-inch screen up front. That came out back in 2012, you know? And now people look at it, they're like, oh, it's old. Those cars were really advanced back in the day. And now it's just, the Germans are just killing it, you know? Especially Mercedes with their big screens, their, what is it called? MBUX. The MBUX new uh, multimedia system that they have. It's crazy. You know, hoping Lexus, you know, gets back in the game, and starts putting out better, products like they used to products are still good but this is nothing exciting anymore it's glad they made cars like this this is which is way more exciting than newer cars anyway so so yeah by the time you're seeing this this car probably might be sold hope you guys enjoyed that episode make sure you like comment and share if you're watching this video if you watch it this far just go ahead and like it and subscribe if you already haven't like, i don't know why i have to tell you guys and request you guys to yeah, subscribe like of the is it 50 percent? i think it's, i think it's, i think it's more than that but anyways 52 exact 52 percent of the we just made that up anyways more than 50 percent of the viewers are not even subscribed but they're watching this channel are you telling me i have 52 percent of my viewers are haters like they just want to watch what i'm doing but not subscribe yeah, i've been 50,000 by now i know right 50,000 by now and make sure you like this video it really helps out with the algorithms yeah, and yeah really like it helps us out like if you're chilling with your friends go on their phone subscribe <laughs> and like the video as well and, and, and honestly, shout out to a few of you who actually messaged me and I actually got a message yesterday. I forgot what your name is. I'm really sorry. You know who you are. You're watching this right now. The guy messaged me. I don't know if you know Ruel. He messaged me a picture of his friend's phone. He sent me a screenshot and it says subscribe. And I was just like, I got confused. Then he wrote below that, look, I went on my friend's phone and I subscribed <laughs> to your channel. And he's like, I do this with all my friends. So that's great, man. We really appreciate it. So. You know, more likes, more subscriptions, open more doors for us, for me and Ruel. Put us on a bigger platform, help us out. You know, we get re we'll get recognized by some manufacturers so we finally can do reviews of some new cars, you know. Unless you guys want to, you know, keep hearing people yelling at the camera. <laughs> All right, I won't say anymore. Yeah, thank you guys, and I'll see you guys soon.